Hello, chess friends, and welcome to the Art of Chess channel, and welcome back to our Queen's Gambit series. So in this series, we're starting some great opening lines and some great defenses after the first move, d4, d5, and then followed with c4. So we have talked about uh, many, many ideas of black. We have analyzed the Queen's Gambit decline, Queen's Gambit accepted, many great lines of the Slav defense, but also some great lines of the semi-Slav setup. Today, we're analyzing again the Slav defense, and again, we're analyzing the so-called Geller Gambit. I think that Geller Gambit is really a sharp line. If you're not a sharp player please don't try it out because it's really a wild opening with tactics all over the board the the game becomes already uh really wild in the early stage of the game the pawn structure is messed up the pawn structure is imbalanced uh, there are many opportunities for white many opportunities for black so it's really one of the sharpest lines of the slot defense so who is better to show uh, how the Geller game, uh, Gambit has to be played? Of course, it's the magician from Riga, Mikhail Tal. He played here an outstanding and a brutal, brutal Geller Gambit against um, Theodor Zeitz uh, back in 1952. I think this game is very, very instructive. It will show us uh, some great attacking opportunities. And in one particular moment, unfortunately for us, Mikhail Tal even missed one tactic that I think you can use as an opening trap uh, in the Geller Gambit because I think you reach this particular position that I want to show you many many times in the gallery gambit and i think you can use one uh, opening trap in order to punish your opponent in an early stage of the game so let's check out now the game be prepared this is really some sick stuff in chess so here d4 uh, c6 c4 d5 so we have now a little bit different move order but it's the slot defense knight to f3 knight to f6 and now the three knights variation by mikhail tal we have now d takes c4 by theodore sides and now we come uh, to the critical part of the game it's the move e4 and the so-called galler gambit the galler gambit is really wild what white has gained of course we have talked about these ideas uh here in my previous video if you want to know more about the defensive strategies in the galler gambit you can also check out my previous analyzed video uh i introduced you many many uh, also great opportunities how to counterplay uh this position from black perspective so as a, if you want to as i said maybe better uh, get a better understanding of this particular video please watch also my previous video of the series so after move e4 we have now the pawn central control so we are controlling these four squares but of course black has a dominant position on the queen side black has uh, here the four versus two situation on the queen side so that's why uh, black should play probably there so here in the continuation b5 was played by Theos Dorzeit so many times we have uh, seen this position so b5 is a normal idea and now uh, Mikhail Tal played the move e5 after move knight to d5 we have a4 knight takes c3 b takes c3 and now a6 here Mikhail Tal played the move bishop to e2 uh, the problem I think uh, in this particular line of uh, the Geller Gambit is this one black cannot castle on the queen side because the pawn structure is already messed up there so you could face some tactics if you castle too early on the queen side so the the files are opened the a file uh, could get opened the b file maybe it could get opened so that's the main issue the problem i think is also that you cannot castle king side many many times because the direction of the attack this advanced pawn on e5 creates of course a space advantage and now there are always some uh very very nice activities with the minor pieces with the queen uh with the bishop uh, here towards the king side and the problem is now black is lacking a little bit of defenders because the knight is not on a normal defensive square it's not on f6 so that's why it's really wild that this opening line here after move bishop to b7 uh, by Theodor Zeitz Mikhail Tal goes immediately with the move knight to g5 and here comes already the critical part and I think you reach this position many many times in the Geller Gambit so I think it's a very often a popular line you can use really now a critical moment if your opponent plays the move h6 like Theodor Zeitz played and unfortunately uh, for us and for Mikhail Tal Mikhail Tal played the move knight to e4 which basically wasn't the best of moves because uh, here it's actually possible to sacrifice the knight on f7 and I think as I said you reach many many times this position with the move knight to g5 and uh, here black is already in serious trouble what black could do is of course uh, black has to take out the pawn on f7 the problem is now you shouldn't attack the king immediately with the bishop the stunner is this one e6 e6 is paralyzing now the whole position on the king side uh, now you see the bishop on f8 is simply locked the bishop cannot play this bishop cannot play because now Mikhail Tal will uh, find a way to attack this diagonal so this bishop is out of game the knight is out of game so as we said if you take out b takes a4 here so I'm just counting some good 
possible moves here for black and for b takes a4 uh, white has accomplished the main idea of this types of structures what we want to do is of course to split the pawn chain if this pawn chain gets split here with b takes a4 then it's of course a great game for white but now the move e6 is really a stunner because what you could do is maybe to escape with the king to g8 maybe if you take here let's see now this possible continuation it's really wild bishop to g4 uh, you could maybe escape here to d6 but after bishop to, uh, bishop to f4 it's already a losing game here e5 we have bishop to e5 you have to go here to uh, to the e5 but now queen to e2 is a serious threat with some discovered threats by bishop to g7 so it's basically a lost game so bishop to g7 will happen and there's nothing that can be done so uh, what you could do instead of this uh, maneuver to d6 you could try maybe here king to f7 uh, king to f7 uh after pardon me king takes e6 and now bishop to g4 you could try king to f7 but now queen to f3 will come into the game again you're now in serious trouble because if you try king to g8 again i'm pointing out you can never play the move c5 in order to liberate your bishop the knight is a little bit out of game the knight is too far away from the action now comes the more normal move bishop to e6 again this bishop on f8 is paralyzed so but i'm pointing out this wasn't played in the game but i've analyzed some ideas here uh so after move knight to f7 as i said this would be a great possibility for white bishop to e6 after move king to h7 now you could make a mistake and play the move queen to f5 queen to f5 is not good because you get g6 you have one check but now after bishop to g7 uh black saves the position so that's why uh here you have to play really a great positional move it's the move h4 h4 is paralyzing now the whole position because you can never play the move g5 you would love to liberate your, uh, yourself somehow with the move g5 here from black's perspective and then bring maybe somehow another defender into the game let's see now possible continuation if you try maybe something like i don't know knight to d7 then we can simply proceed with the normal idea queen to f7 and we're threatening now this move bishop to f5 and then it's game over so the h4 move is very very important in this particular line uh what you could do maybe here is uh, this idea queen to e8 to protect your life or somehow but now you get again bishop to f7 and now queen to e4 and again it's a force checkmate so really wild stuff so let's go back maybe black could escape after move queen to f3 here towards d uh, uh e8 but now you get bishop to uh, e6 and again we're threatening a checkmate here on um on f7 you could try maybe to liberate your uh, some squares for your for your king but now you get uh, bishop to f4 first you have to move the queen and you see now the queen is simply trapped after queen to b6 and now there is a great way maybe to play a5 first uh kicking away the queen and again you see black is a serious trouble after queen to h5 so you see how black is simply paralyzed it's almost like a two swung position black doesn't have good scores if you try for instance queen to d6 to counter play to attack the bishop it's not a problem queen to f7 uh here after king to d8 we have bishop to f4 again this bishop this other bishop comes into the game and the, the queen is trapped it's really wild how this attack works so it's really brutal brutal um, um, gambit line so let's see now possible continuation if you don't take the pawn let's imagine uh, black goes here uh, with the move king to g8 then bishop to h5 is now the serious threat rook to f7 has to be played in order to create some uh, breeding spaces for the king but now queen to f3 again uh, now you have to play the move g5 that's the only defensive move that helps you out at least for a while now bishop to f7 and now after king to h8 bishop to g6 attacking and now bishop to e4 is really the suggested line by the engine now uh, queen to f5 is happening g uh, h4 if you try for instance b4 let's see a dubious move because again i'm pointing out you don't have better moves let's see b4 uh, you get simply here h4 and the bone structure is paralyzed if you try something like g4 to pass through to never allow this h file to get open then queen to f5 is a serious threat and you cannot protect your h6 pawn that's the main issue you see the bishop is blocked out by its own rook so this are really wild stuff so as i said after the move h6 uh you should consider this idea knight to f7 king to f7 and then e6 and the game is over so i think this is a tactic that you should be familiar with uh in the galar gambit because again i'm pointing out these pieces are really paralyzed bishop on f8 look bishop on b7 
three pieces they're not playing in the game queen is passive now life for problems it's i think a great compensation uh here for uh for for the bishop so after a move uh, as we said uh, h6 unfortunately for us uh mikhail tal played the move knight to e4 but the game will be still attractive i promise you so here e6 played by um theodore Zeit. we have bishop to a3 a normal idea i think in gallery gambit setups because uh black has many pawns on life course so black has this pawn chain on life course so that's why uh, we should get rid of the key the defender of dark squares it's of course the dark square bishops so that's why after bishop to a3 uh, he rook to a3 casting was played and now also casting by uh, Theodore side here knight to d7 we have now f4 uh, Mikhail Tal is of course trying f5 f6 and now queen to e7 and uh, maybe here immediately c5 is uh, as I think a great defensive move here for black uh, you, as if you maybe face this Geller gambit from black perspective one of the main goals is simply to proceed somehow with the move c5 uh, which unfortunately uh, Theodore Zeitz didn't play knight to d6 would be sort of a forced move here bishop to d5 cementing the position still I think black has solved at least for a while some positional problems so as I said unfortunately Theodore Zeitz missed this idea now Mikhail Tal played rook to a1 again uh, c5 didn't happen in the game and now uh, Mikhail Tal plays simply queen to d2 here Theodore Zeitz takes another pawn it seems so that something went wrong for Mikhail Tal because uh, he has lost now many many pawns it's now a four versus one situation on the queen side but it's simply too late because now uh, comes the move f5 and from this point on it's a one-way ticket f5 is true uh, I think uh, black is in serious trouble after he takes f5 here comes the stunner by Mikhail Tal the point was not to take uh, the pawn on f5 this was Mikhail Tal's opportunity because if you take for instance uh, g takes f6 that's not possible you get queen to h6 uh you could maybe try to get rid of the spawn uh, on f6 but you force now into some checkmate threats so here rook to f3 followed with rook to g3 is the serious threat so you would be forced to play f4 to prolong the game a little bit but now rook to h3 you have to play f6 in order to uh, protect somehow your seventh and eighth rank but now queen to h8 rook to h7 and now the problem is rook takes uh, e7 comes with the check and after king to e7 uh, black has lost too much material black is simply lost so as i said really really wild stuff uh, so after move knight to f6 uh, here theodore Zeitz didn't take he played now king to h8 and now Mikhail tal uh, takes rook to f5 we have rook to d8 theodore Zeitz is trying to get the queen somehow into the defense but now uh, rook to f1 Mikhail tal activates all of his pieces look at this setup rook rook battery uh, knight on f6 queen on d2 aiming on the square h6 bishop can always come into the game maybe somehow here on this two diagonal so it's really a, a brutal brutal attacking setup by the magician from Riga. bishop to c8 comes a little bit too late rook to h5 simply improves the position of the rook now we're threatening rook to h6 followed with queen to h6 and it's checkmate so uh, here queen to f8 protecting this idea but now again another rook lift rook to f4 because the pawn chain is still holding our position Position in the center uh we can of course always create a flank attack when uh, the pawns in the center are blocked so that's why here uh this pawn chain gives us at least for a while some attacking opportunities black cannot counterplay here uh rook to f4 we have knight to c3 but who cares about the pawn Mikhail tal simply goes rook to h4 and now the series threat is again rook takes h6 here after move knight to e2 we don't want to even take out the knight this uh, position is so desperate for black that Mikhail Tal played the move king to f2 he doesn't have to even take out the knight again we're just aiming the square h6 in the continuation uh, g5 was played and now after rook to h6 queen to h6 rook takes h6 king has to move queen takes g5 happens king to f8 and now after move rook to h8 it was simply game over in this position black resigned because it's a force checkmate in three uh, king to e7 is here a possibility but now knight to d5 double check with the knight and uh with the queen discovered check you have only uh one good square because if you move to d7 then you get checkmated on e7 so that's why here knight to c7 it's like scorpion says come over here come to the square uh here um d7 and now after move queen to d8 it would be a checkmate so brilliant brilliant uh game by the magician from riga but as i said be careful be careful in this um 
these types of structures because uh, we have seen that uh, after move knight to e4, uh, Bla black could have solved the position of problems here, knight to d7, f4, and now c5 is really a must move here for black to somehow open the center because the pawn chain, as we said, gives us opportunities, gives us attacking opportunities, it gives us time, which is the most important thing, but I think in one particular moment, black has to break the pawn chain with the move c5, which unfortunately, uh, Theodor Zeitz didn't do, and I think he got punished because of his passive play. So, I hope that you enjoyed this game, I really enjoyed it a lot, uh, let's go again back, please, because uh, I think this position will happen to you many, many times after move knight to g5 h6 if that happens to you bam knight to f7 not to go knight to f4 knight to f7 king to f7 and e6 you have seen the brutal puzzle lines for white it's simply a bad bad game here for black so okay i hope that you enjoy this game i think we'll cover more and more of this um of this Gary Gambit games i think they are very very attractive i found also a great gameplay by Gary Kasparov it's even I think better uh, than this one, so be prepared. We're uh, doing a little bit more of this gallery game, but I don't hope you don't mind because it's I think a very often and very popular line to play for for white, especially maybe if you're a stronger player against a weaker player, then you could create some wild wild tactics all over the board. So. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you realize the strategical and tactical ideas of this particular opening. If you want to study uh, the Queen's Gambit more, please check out my whole Queen's Gambit series. Here's the link. And if you want to study, uh, study maybe more the Slav Defense, please check out my Slav Defense series. I've created, as I said, a separate playlist. If you just want to maybe study the Slav, here's also the link to that series. And if you have trouble maybe to play as Black, you can also check out my Hyper Accelerated Dragon Sicilian Defense series as a good response to e4 and of course if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course